Mushrooms are more than just a culinary delight. They're a marvel of biology, science, and precision engineering. From their earthy aroma to their rich umami flavor, mushrooms have captivated chefs, scientists, and health enthusiasts alike. But have you ever wondered how these remarkable fungi are cultivated on a mass scale in factory settings? In this comprehensive journey, we'll unveil the hidden processes that make large-scale mushroom production possible, from substrate preparation to harvesting, washing, packaging, and distribution. The journey begins with substrate preparation, which serves as the foundation of mushroom cultivation. This step is all about creating a nutrient-rich, sterilized medium that provides the necessary support for mycelium to grow and thrive. Different species of mushrooms have different preferences when it comes to substrates. While oyster mushrooms grow well on straw, others like shaitake prefer hardwood chips. To prepare the substrate, materials undergo pre-treatment processes, such as soaking, boiling, or steaming. This not only softens the substrate, but also eliminates harmful microorganisms and enhances its nutritional content. In modern factories, Forklifts carry large bundles of wood chips and deposit them into machines that boil and sanitize them. Moisture management is critical at this stage. The substrate must be moist but not waterlogged. Strain selection comes next, an essential step that determines the quality and yield of the mushroom crop. Expert growers choose high-quality mushroom spawn, which contains the mycelium necessary for colonization. Stage dot in the incubation phase. The inoculated substrate is transferred into a highly controlled environment known as the incubation chamber. These chambers are maintained at specific temperatures, usually between 55 degrees Fahrenheit and 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and high humidity levels around 90% to promote mycelium growth. The environment is kept dark to simulate underground conditions while fans ensure proper air circulation, allowing oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. Over time, the mycelium spreads throughout the substrate, forming a dense white network of fungal threads. This is a silent, invisible process, but it lays the groundwork for mushroom formation. Once colonization is complete, can growers lower the temperature slightly, increase fresh air exchange, and expose the trays to light. These environmental changes simulate seasonal transitions and trigger the mycelium to form fruiting bodies. Tiny pin-like structures, known as pins, begin to emerge on the surface of the substrate. These pins are the early signs of mushroom formation and grow rapidly into mature mushrooms within a few days. The next stage is harvesting, which demands precision and care. Skilled workers use their hands to gently twist and pull the mushrooms from the substrate, ensuring that the delicate caps and stems remain intact. The mushrooms are then placed into ventilated trays or baskets that allow airflow and prevent spoilage. Some factories also use automated grading systems powered by artificial intelligence and computer vision technology. These machines evaluate each mushroom size, shape, and color, sorting them according to predetermined grades. Sophisticated robotic arms are capable of detecting and removing spoiled or contaminated mushrooms with exceptional accuracy. This ensures consistency and quality and enhances food safety for consumers. After harvesting, the mushrooms are sent through a washing line where a gentle stream of water rinses off any residual dirt or debris. The pressure is carefully controlled to avoid damaging the mushrooms. In some facilities, vibrating water baths are used to provide a thorough yet gentle cleaning. The mushrooms are then dried using low-temperature air dryers, which remove excess moisture and help prolong shelf life without compromising quality or nutritional value. This is especially important for mushrooms destined for longer storage or further processing. Once clean and dry, mushrooms may be processed into different forms depending on their end use. Factories use precision slicing machines to cut mushrooms into 
Uniform pieces for packaged fresh products. These processed mushrooms are then transferred to automated packaging lines. Plastic containers are filled and sealed with robotic arms that also apply labeling stickers containing key product information such as batch number, expiry date, and pricing. Every year, Americans devour over 2 billion onion rings. Crispy, golden, and fragrant, these irresistible snacks have become a staple in the American fast food landscape. At first glance, they clearly look like onion, but have you ever wondered? What's actually inside that fried coating? Today, we're going straight into the heart of a modern onion ring factory to uncover the secrets behind one of the nation's most beloved side dishes. Onion rings aren't just a modern invention. In fact, their origins trace back to the early 19th century. The first known recipe appeared in an 1802 British cookbook, simply instructing readers to slice onions, dip them in batter, and fry them. But it wasn't until the 1920s and 1930s that onion rings rose to fame in the United States. So how are onion rings made today? It all starts with the onions, of course. Bees are typically grown under contract on large-scale farms in states like California, Texas, and New Mexico regions known for their hot, dry climate, sandy soils, and abundant sunshine, which produce large, low-moisture onions ideal for frying. Harvest happens from late spring to midsummer, when onion tops begin to dry and turn yellow. Specialized machines gently lift the onions from the soil, shake off excess dirt, and lay them in neat rows to sun cure for another one to two days. This drying process toughens the outer skin, helping prevent mold during storage. Once cured, the onions are collected in large macro bins, each holding up to 500 kilograms and quickly transported to the factory, usually within 48 hours. Time is of the essence to keep them fresh and crisp. Upon arrival, the onions are immediately sorted by size using an automatic sizing machine. Only large, evenly round onions with diameters between 75 and 95 millimeters make the cut. Misshapen, cracked, or undersized ones are rejected and redirected for use in diced onion mixes, sauces, or even livestock feed. First, the onions go through a high-speed pneumatic peeler an advanced machine with spinning blades that remove the skins efficiently and without contact. Next, powerful water jets wash the peeled onions thoroughly. At full capacity, a factory can clean and prep up to 50 tons of onions per day. Then comes slicing. Industrial blades slice each bulb horizontally into perfect rings about 12 to 15 millimeters thick. Each slice typically contains three to seven nested rings. But these rings aren't yet ready, they need to be separated. A specialized vibrating machine, assisted by air jets, gently teases the layers apart without breaking them. Now it's time to suit up the rings with their crunchy armor. The batter. The process starts with a dry coating made of flour, cornmeal, salt, pepper, and baking powder, which helps the wet batter stick. Then comes the wet batter, a thick slurry of flour, water, cassava starch, vegetable oil, and sometimes lecithin, or powdered egg. Its moisture content must stay between 40 to 45 percent, ensuring it's thick enough to cling to the onion, but fluid enough to apply evenly. Modern production lines can batter up to 300,000 onion. Rings per hour, an incredible feat of engineering and efficiency. Next. The battered rings are plunged into vats of hot soybean oil, heated to pack minus 185 degrees Celsius in just Y to Y seconds. The coating puffs and crisps to a golden perfection, while the onion inside softens slightly without losing its identity. After frying, the rings are cooled using cold air at about 5 degrees Celsius, then immediately flash frozen at minus 8 degrees Celsius. This process locks in freshness and texture, allowing the product to be stored for up to 12 months. Finally, the onion rings are packed, boxed, 
and shipped off to restaurants, cafeterias, and grocery stores nationwide. So the next time you bite into a hot, crunchy onion ring, remember, what you're enjoying is a blend of tradition, agriculture, engineering, and culinary chemistry. It's a real onion slice, battered, fried, and preserved at the peak of its crispy glory. This humble side dish, born centuries ago, continues to hold a place of honor on American plates from greasy spoons to gourmet kitchens. And now, you know what's really inside. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates. Share your thoughts in the comment section down below.